Well, did I mention 100%? No, actually, you got 100% on your test. You also got 100% on your quiz, I think. Hmm. Let me get that out. I messed up on one question. You think so? Yeah. Then how did you get 7 out of 7 not, points? Not this one. Oh, ah, okay. You're thinking about your test. Let me get your folder out. Hang on. It was the one for the, the nachos, I think, or something. Oh, you're talking about like the multiplication tables quiz? Oh, okay. Well, you've passed them all so far. So I don't think, I don't think that you've missed any of your tables. Let me get out one more thing so we can get started. I made like a mini report card for both of them. Okay. So you can kind of see how they're doing, which they're doing excellent. Like, I don't think I have any concerns about them. Here we go. So. What we've got is just kind of like where they're at right now. Um, so you, this is interesting. I have you at a two and a half in math because of this iReady score. So you scored fourth grade level on your iReady test at the beginning of the year, but you have been passing all of your class tests with flying colors. So it just means that maybe there were some tricky questions on there that got you tripped up. Maybe there was something that you just didn't know yet, right? But I'm assuming that that's going to go up. So as long as she keeps showing me that she's, like, blowing these things out of the water, I think she'll be at a three as well in math. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure why that would have happened. I can actually look more specifically at what parts of the iReady test were hard for her because they break it down. So let me see here. My name on my list. Oh, here we are. Yeah, so she got fifth grade in algebra, numbers and operations, which is like, how can I explain numbers and operations? That would be like your multiplication and division kind of facts. She got fourth grade as well as measurement. Yep, this one's measurement and this one's geometry. So you did have some tricky sections on the I ready. So we can, I can even like give you a printout of kind of more specifically if you want that. I'm not I mean, worried about it. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think that it was probably just some questions that tripped her up and. Mm -hmm. Especially than, since she's getting it now. Yeah, so. she's doing totally fine in class. So actually, when I looked at that, I was like, hang on a second, where are you at? Um, <clears throat> so writing is also almost there for you. We were talking about making sure you cut out the unimportant parts of your story so that you focus on that problem and solution. Um, and talked about just making sure that each story has a problem and solution that's clear that connects back to the moral of the story. And so she's an excellent writer. I think that she's getting there. Her first story was the personal narrative. Now they're doing invented. So I think they're both having a lot of fun with it. I mean, they're both really getting into it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure that we're going to see that bump up as well. Mm -hmm. And then both girls, as far as reading goes, are at orange level in Spanish, so that's on grade level. W is above grade level. I know you guys were asking me about that. Mm. So that's just, um, so it goes T-U-V is fifth grade, and then W would be like the beginning of sixth grade. And that's where they ended with Miss Ramirez last year. Mm. So I just kind of checked in on that. Mm. So yeah, obviously really great readers. Mm -hmm. I talked to her today about, I love that she reads, mm -hmm. but when it's Spanish reading time, you need to read along with us and Percy Jackson. Not have your own book open, right? Mm -hmm. There are times when I'm so happy that you're reading, but other times you have to be reading along with us. And making sure that if it's Spanish reading time, you're obviously reading a Spanish book, right? So that you're continuing to practice. So were you just like super into your own book or are you not liking Percy Jackson as much? I'm not liking Percy Jackson. Mm, okay. Do you like the Spanish reading though? Kind of. Not as much as English. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it may just because it's harder, right? <clears throat> a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're used to the other one. The other one is just easier for you. Yeah. But as you get older, oh, <laughs> as you get older, you're going to really appreciate knowing both those. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to open so many doors for you. You're going to have so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you are an awesome reader, so I want you to keep it up with us in Percy Jackson because it really is like a really exciting book. And you could do what Rose is doing and maybe you check it out from the library in English and read along on your own time 
so that you are kind of getting it better if you feel like there's any confusion. Good. Because mm. it's a whole series. And the author is really great. He has like multiple series. And mm. if you really like it in the end, then maybe you would like some of his other books. Or maybe you would like to read the rest of the series in English. Because it is at your reading level. So actually, I think it's purple. So it would be like one harder. So that would be kind of perfect for you, actually. Because that would be what you're trying to get to next. I recommend it. So let's talk about that in a minute. Because we are going to talk about goals. And I think, well, since you are reading so high, I don't need to make a reading goal for you. But just on your own, that could be a practice goal to get up to purple this year. Do you do think it. you can? Do it. Yeah. Why are you feeling so shy right now? Are you feeling not sure about getting up to purple level? What's your thoughts? Oh, come on, you are not this nervous usually. I want to hear what you think. You're a good reader. You think you can make it to purple? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know what? This is how I know that this is a good goal because if it's something challenging for you, that's a good goal mm -hmm. because I want you to be challenged. So I am going to write it on here for you anyway. I think your goal is going to be to reach purple level in Spanish this year. Mm -hmm. because that means that you would be ending fifth grade at a sixth grade reading level in Spanish and I'm sure that we're going to keep going up with your English level as well mm -hmm. so if you end b above a sixth grade in English and then at sixth grade in Spanish you're perfectly set up for middle school mm -hmm. and you're already like a super strong reader so I think that that's going to be your goal and then I also want us to make a goal for writing Okay, so because those are just a little bit, a little bit lower than a three, you're almost there in English, you were close in Spanish, um, I think that you can get there. Do you want to look again at why those are a two and a two and a half? Did you have any question about what the score came from? Because I didn't like put it in like paragraph. I have your rubric here and we can talk about it. There's a math quiz. Okay. So your, this is your English one here. So you are almost there with your beginning. It looks like you didn't introduce what the conflict is going to be. Yep, you tried to organize in paragraphs once, but you didn't quite get there. So that's an easy goal for the next one is practicing splitting it up into paragraphs. And we talked about that happens anytime that you change the setting, anytime you change the time. So anytime you do like a flash forward, that's going to be a new paragraph, okay? And if you have confusion about that, just talk to me and we'll get that up to a three. And then your ending, I didn't think that you ended with a thought, feeling, or question that connects back to your lesson or moral. You were getting there, so that's again why it's a two, but not quite a three. So then down here, this is where, yep, you didn't have organized into paragraphs your Spanish story. So that was why that was a one in that area and then still working on that, introducing your conflict, ending with your thought, feeling your question. So if we focus on those things with your invented narrative, specifically the things that were hard for you on the first story, you're gonna bump up to a three. Do you kind of feel like you understand how to break it into paragraphs now, or do you feel like you need some practice with me to do that? Like 10 minutes later I put it? Mm, yeah, because that would be a new time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a paragraph is basically like breaking your story into different sections, right? So anytime that you're in a new place, that's going to be a new section of your story. So that's why if you're changing, you're jumping ahead to a new time, then that's going to be a new section in your story. And don't paragraphs have a thesis in the beginning? Technically, I know that's a little for, later. For informational writing, yes. Thesis and then explanation mm -hmm. and then conclusion. So we'll do that next. Yeah. Okay. That'll be for when they like research and they're explaining, they're teaching information. Yes. But it's it's in a way its own mm -hmm. story. Yeah. It, within the story. So yeah. you think about it. This is this is what do I this is like what I want you to think about starting this paragraph, mm -hmm. and this is why I want you to think about this, mm -hmm. and this is 
how it ended or this is how it's going mm -hmm. or or I'll come back to this later or you know yeah. things like that but it has a flow just like a whole story mm -hmm. would. Hmm. and we've been talking about like they need to learn to indent right so knowing what that indent is using the tab key right and that every paragraph has to start with that and with the indention mm -hmm. yeah so it is kind of a struggle for them you know because a lot of them it's like a big long sentence and it's like nope we need to learn how to mm -hmm. break it up break it up break it up so mm -hmm. yeah she'll get there i think with this next story i'm gonna have it graded before report cards ideally so we'll see if you know you can do that by then and i think you will because we've talked about it and so you can get back there and, you know get back to it and practice um let's see there was only one more thing to talk about which is your actual reflection before the conference, which you get to lead. So what would you like to tell your dad about? Let's start, read the question to him and then tell him how you answer it. Um, <clears throat> what have you learned in fifth grade so far? You are aprendido multiplicando fracciones, volumen, área, y dividiendo y sumando. Mm -hmm. So fractions, mm -hmm. dividing, volume, dividends, aprendido, a learning. Mm -hmm. um, sumando, sum, sum, sums, sumando. Yeah. yeah. Like addition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What have you enjoyed in fifth grade so far? Math, art, and reading. Mm -hmm. Leando, okay. What are your strengths in school, reading, math, and English? Mm -hmm. And what subjects do you need most help in? Writing and Spanish. Okay. How can you, how can I help you more this year? I don't know. <laughs> no sé. Uh-huh. How is it we hate to see it good, but I sometimes fight with my sister. Very true. Okay, and please donate food. I did see this. <laughs> is there anything? <laughs> yeah, is there anything else that you want your parents to know? <laughs> please donate food or snacks. I know, she's always like, can I eat something else that was in the snack box? I'm like, not unless we're missing, like if they're not enough for anybody, then I will put the donations, but they go fast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I did put that, we didn't talk about behavior, and I said, all good things, very focused, hardworking, but you let your fights with Bella sometimes spill into the classroom at times. And I said the same thing on hers, because I don't know why, but sometimes you girls just go at it, and it's usually little Bella problems. Bella starts it goes both ways I'm sure I'm sure it's not always her starting it but then it turns into a thing you know and nobody else seems to be involved it's just you two kind of bickering so don't let things affect your learning time because <clears throat> you know I have to treat you just like I would any other two people in the class so if two other people were pulling each other's hair that would be a problem right and just because your sister is doesn't mean that you get to get away with it. But there's a lot of hair pulling that has happened, especially this year. That seems to be the way that you girls fight with each other. Am I wrong? I was sitting on the carpet and Bella, and I, I asked Bella to pull me up and she pulled my braid instead. Okay. That was one of them. Then there's been like the messing up each other's cubbies or whatever when you were mad. That was a while ago. I don't know who started it. I don't even know what it was about. But generally, I tell you, you girls have to work it out together, right? Like, you don't need to come tell me. You just need to talk it through and figure out what's going on. Because I'm sure it's like a little thing and then you make up quickly, which you do. Usually you're like, we're fine. But I don't even know what starts it sometimes. We're just sisters. That's how it is, isn't it? That's why I think, ooh, this is going to be hard next year, but also good for you to kind of be split up sometimes into different classes. <clears throat> and. Yep. <clears throat> they get to choose classes next year? They're going to choose... No. It depends. Well, here's my answer for that. Since they're both in band and orchestra, no. <laughs> because that would be their elective. Oh. So as long as they stay in the dual program, if they do, and then choose band and orchestra... The same classroom the whole time? They would be with the same cohort, yeah. In the same teacher classroom? Mm-hmm. For, for those Spanish classes. For three, three years? Yeah. Yeah. So they would have at least their Spanish reading and writing and I think it's science in Spanish. Together. Together. I think it's only two classes. But then they would have band and orchestra separate and then they could be divided up for the math, the English class. 
What am I missing? Social studies. Mm. There should be six classes total. So, yeah. So they will still have some together. But I think it's really good that they chose band and orchestra separately because it's already their first chance to be independent. Mm-hmm. And just get used to, like, having their own space, I feel like, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's healthy. That's good. Mm-hmm. Then you might not fight as much. Because you won't be all together. You miss each other. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Exactly. You're going to miss each other. You're going to be sad if you're not in the same classes. I think that'll really happen. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. It's only for like 30 minutes. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah. Do you feel like you miss her? It'll help you, though. Okay. It's, it's a good thing. You'll develop, you know, more independence. And then... You know, as you get older, you will have more choice with classes, and you probably will be separated more in high school, I'm sure, as they get up to that level. So, anyway, that's kind of a side note.